Hi, this is just a short video. I wanted to show this uh, system. It's totally one of a kind. It has a uh, seven RX Vega 64 uh, GPUs all on one motherboard. It's got a 16 core Xeon and it has four power supplies. Uh, I'm getting ready to take this system apart, but I'll probably never build one like it again. So I thought I'd make make a short video of it and just show you what what it's all about. So this was built at the height of the crypto mining mania. A lot of money and time went into building this thing and we used it for a little bit but not nearly as much as we thought we would like. Uh, so I'll give you just a brief tour. So um, get in close here. So the, at the heart of it it's an X99 ASUS motherboard. Uh, it's the X99 dash E 10 G W S stands for workstation and it has two 10 gigabit uh, Intel uh, copper RJ45 poor NICs in it it has a ton of throughput but what's really special about this board is it has PCI Express uh, lane expanders and it has two of these chips so it gives you up to seven 8x PCIe um, uh, throughput so that enables you to put seven graphics cards and those are like I said seven uh, RX Vega 64 graphics cards they each are about 250 watts TDP which is why uh, we have a bunch of power supplies running it so I'll show you those briefly so first down here we have uh, Corsair AX 1500i 1500 watt power supply. That's that's powering the motherboard, CPU, and the first three uh, Vegas. Then we have uh, up here we have two 1U uh, server uh, power supplies. These are made by HP and they each put out 1200 watts. And those are powering the last four uh, graphics cards. So two cards per power supply so that loads the power supplies at roughly um, about half which is power supplies are the most efficient when they're at 50 percent load and so those uh, those are mounted up here and in the very front there's a, there's a 120 millimeter fan uh, blowing right into the intakes keeping those nice and cool and then uh, the last power supply is down here and that is, I think it's a 150 watt, 12 volt power supply. And that is powering two things. I'll, sh I'll go through the whole water cooling system in a bit, uh, but that's the first pump. That's a, a Coolant's um, a 12 volt pump, and it's powered by that power supply. And the second thing it powers is this external Coolant's unit, which is, I believe it's a 2000 watt uh, heat dissipation capability and it gets swing the camera around and it's powered off that power supply that 12 volt power supply right there um, and I did some mods to that I'll show you that in a second uh, so that's that's it for the power uh, because it's um, a Corsair AX uh, you, we, can, we can monitor the uh, the output for the power supply through software and we can also manipulate the fan uh, as well from there uh, so then we have a 120 millimeter fan here, keeping that power supply nice and cool. We have uh, we have a fan underneath here, just blowing air in there. Uh, and like I showed you, there is a fan cooling these uh, power supplies. They output their heat through here, and they also modulate via PWM. Uh, so right now they're not making much noise because the system's at idle. And then um, on the front we have this uh, six bay. 2.5 inch uh, uh, hot swap uh, drive capability here and I have some SSDs in here one for boot and then one for uh, just uh, some auxiliary stuff so then let's move on to the uh, the water cooling portion of it so uh, the the CPU is on its own loop I, I never really did anything too crazy with a CPU but like I said it's a 16 core Xeon uh, I don't remember the the, the model number but it's it, it fit the x99 generation and we, we just 
we found that, that this uh, AIO cooler from Corsair did a perfectly good job at keeping it nice and cool. We even did some Monero mining with the, the CPU and it, it, it stayed very, very cool. So, and then uh, let's go to the water cooling system, which I think is the real beauty of this whole system. So let me zoom out here and I'll describe it. So first you have, you have two radiators in this. In this, uh, this is a Corsair 800D case. A friend of mine uh, didn't want it anymore and gave it to me, so I decided to do something awesome with it. Uh, and at the top of this, we have a 360 millimeter radiator up there. It's a copper core. And then how this, how this is plumbed is all of the piping that you see here is all uh, steel piping which is nickel plated and everything is hard tubing in here it's all metal pipe and metal joints there are no uh, o-ring connections and acrylic tubing this is an absolutely bulletproof solid system it, it's virtually impossible for it to leak so uh, all the fittings are coolants fittings the pipe is 3 8 and these uh, fittings that you see right here, we can, let's go down here, that's a better place to see it. These fittings are from Coolance and they convert from standard quarter inch BSPP, I think is what they call it, water cooling fittings to threaded uh, pipe fittings. And these pipes, I just got these, these were marketed for like a residential plumbing for bathroom, like showers. That's why they're nickel plated. And the nickel plating kind of matched the whole chrome look of everything, which is why I went with that. And I just went with some, some Teflon tape seals that you use in like plumbing applications. So this, this piping setup means that it, it, it can't blow out under any pressure. Not that you would be operating this under crazy pressures as well, but um, it's just absolutely uh, bulletproof. So uh, how, how the loop works is there are two pumps in the system for redundancy and for flow. The first is this pump down here. It does about, uh, let's see if I can remember the uh, flow rate, about five liters per minute, roughly. And that pump pumps, let's get in here. It goes right back and it goes straight up into the radiator. And then from the radiator, it comes out it goes to the back of the computer where we have Coolance Quick Connects. And then we use soft tubing up here. And this is half inch soft tubing. We have these little Quick Connects. And what this does is it enables you to add this secondary radiator cooling option up here. So if you needed it, you would just run these little patch, patch, um, tubes up to this secondary cooler and this secondary cooler like I said is capable of hand of dissipating 2,000 watts of heat it has its own pump it uses a, a DDC pump in here which has a heat sink on the front and we added a 60 millimeter fan which is also powered by that auxiliary 12 volt power supply to keep the, the pump really nice and cool and as you can see right here it has the liquid temp monitoring and the flow rate which is five liters per minute and uh, over on this side, like I showed you before, there's the reservoir. And we're running uh, distilled water with a biocide agent in there. And then uh, this has three fans which can modulate for speed. Right now they're not even running because it's, it's, it's idling, it's really cool. And then it has a 360 millimeter radiator under there as well. So if you didn't need this, uh, if you didn't require that extra cooling capability, and you only needed the uh, 360 millimeter radiator that's integrated with the case, so what you could do here is you could disconnect this and then just patch these two together. So what that would do with a loop is after the pump pushes the coolant up into the radiator, it would go to the back. It would basically loop around and come in through this pipe and hit the GPU array. And for this, it's all EK water blocks. It's, uh, we have an EK backplate on the top because we couldn't do backplates on all of them. They're so close together. And then we have this, they call it a HEPTA 7 
card uh, block distribution device and it floods all of those compartments and then it comes back down here and goes through this pump down below. So what, what we found is this is such a large water cooling loop and there's a lot of restrictions going through all of these blocks at once. If we didn't have this extra pump down here and it, all of the, the fluid movement was dependent on the DDC in the coolants, it wouldn't be enough to uh, circulate everything with the flow rate that we needed. So by adding that second pump, it gave us peace of mind. Uh, so you have redundancy for the pumps, but it also alleviates the strain on the DDC pump and they kind of share the load. And then what we have here on this side, that's just a, a drain uh, right there because that's like uh, the lowest point of the system. So you can literally, you can, uh, you can swing this out. I'll show you, it just rotates like that. You can swing it out and then open it up and it'll just drain right out the front if you needed to drain and work on it. Uh, but you can see the lights on there. Right now, I, I need to disable crossfire mode. That's why one of them is green. But all of these can be on at full capacity at the same time, and the system can totally handle it. Uh, but but yeah, it's uh, it was very expensive to build, and it would have made for an incredible uh, system. But you know, crypto isn't what it was. But uh, one other thing we wanted to do. The reason we went for this quick disconnect system up here is we wanted to use uh, a Coolance liquid to liquid cooler and have a chiller outside of our um, facility so we could replace this with a liquid to liquid unit and then it would transfer the heat generated from this device to another facility cooling loop that would take outside the building uh, to a chiller. And then in the winter time, if you wanted to heat indoors, you could use this and then dump the heat in here. We did calculations a while ago for all of those 250 watt TDP uh, cards and came up with a BTU figure and it was something ridiculous, well over 10,000 BTUs of heat generated by this thing, but just something absolutely incredible. For power requirements, we had to uh, wire a eight gauge uh, solid copper um, wire and a 30 amp uh, 120 volt uh, supply to power this thing and when all of the fans spin up on that coolant unit it sounds like a tornado and there's just uh, it, it will heat up any room in no time at all so from a thermal perspective the, the unit itself is perfectly capable of keeping all those cards cool uh, under full load for several hours with an ambient temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit, sustained 70. Uh, those cards can stay at around uh, 50, 50 to 60 degrees under full load being that close together. So it really is an incredible system, works very, very well. And I'm going to be taking it apart and selling five of those cards. I'll keep two in it, and this system will be uh, used for uh, probably video rendering or something like that. I just don't need seven cards anymore. But uh, an absolutely incredible system. It weighs a ton. There's no way a single person can carry the whole thing. It weighs a ton. Probably, I'd say, like 200 pounds. We, we put it on a very heavy-duty, solid MDF uh, table right here. The table itself it weighs about 150 pounds. It's solid, uh, but absolutely one of a kind. We spent probably about $8,000 on this thing. Like I said, I'll probably never ever build a system like this again, but it's really special. It was a huge learning experience uh, going with these, uh, these piping. We first did acrylic tubing with uh, O-ring connectors, and I hated that we ended up frying one of our motherboards. And those motherboards cost a lot of money. Fried one of them due to a water leak. But after a couple of iterations, we, we went with this uh, piping setup and it's just absolutely solid, no leaks. This has been built and running intermittently for uh, about two years. Zero leaks, zero leaks. Everything is just bulletproof. 
So getting all, getting uh, Windows 10 and the AMD drivers to recognize all the cards was a, a bit of a fiddle, but uh, we were able to do it. The, the key lesson we learned is you really can't do it uh, through RDP. You have to use a uh, local terminal to uh, get everything to um, to register. If you do it through RDP, it kind of screws it up, but it's uh, you're able to do it uh, with uh, the Radeon uh, catalyst or not the catalyst but whatever the latest uh, adrenaline drivers are you can do it and um, back in the day uh, we were able to get uh, ethereum hash rate with these cards at about 275 mega hashes per second and during the height of crypto mining this system alone generated about five hundred dollars a month uh, so anyways now it's going to be like I said, now the cards are going to be sold. We'll keep two. And um, I'll probably keep the power supplies in in case I ever add cards like this again. But uh, that's that's that. This was uh, quite a project. And by the way, it, just in case anyone gets asked questions and wondering what this thing is, this was a, a project I did. I had this old Cooler Master case from way back in the day. I think it's an ATC 200 and it was the champagne case and I decided to rescue it and do something special with it I could have done a rack mount I have a rack chassis but we decided to uh, build a FreeNAS server in here so that's a super micro motherboard those are eight eight terabyte HGST uh, serial attached SCSI drives so it gives you 64 terabytes of total capacity and it's uh, water cooled as you can see it's got a 12 core Xeon and that right there is a 10 gigabit Chelsea uh, network interface card which is also water cooled because the chip itself can get anywhere to 50 to 70 degrees Celsius but with a water cooling system it stays at 20 degrees Celsius which is like 77 degrees Fahrenheit it's amazing and this also has two pumps. It's got a little auxiliary pump right there. It has an external loop, and it comes up to another external coolant unit. And what I love about these is I, we own several of these in different configurations. So if this ever failed, I could just instantly disconnect that. Even while it's running, these are quick disconnect, no spill connections. I could disconnect these, hot swap another unit in here without powering down the server. The server has like a crazy runtime at this point. And by the way, we also put a little, uh, oh, uh, I think it's a, it's not, I don't think it's an OLED, but there's a little screen right there, it's like 1024 resolution, and that gives us, uh, we can see the uh, console with that. And incidentally, that screen also runs on, uh, has an HDMI connection, so we can get output from uh, our, our mining machine. Uh, so anyways, that's that. If you want to see the, the power unit that we had put in for this whole project. It's this monster right here. It's a 3000, I think it's a smart UPS 3000. It uses this crazy connector over here as you can see. Ignore the pink color. This bedroom used to be a child's bedroom. I haven't repainted it yet. But anyways, that's it. So hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, let me know. Or if you're crazy enough and want to buy this thing, I'll sell you the entire system for $8,000. <laughs> All right, have a good one. Bye.